I just will try to go through fairly quickly, um, but we want to, we've gradually developed a new approach to leprosy control uh, because the old approaches don't seem to be working. And uh, this is really what I'm going to be talking about is a partnership between two non-profit organizations, American Leprosy Missions, which has funded the development of a new leprosy vaccine by the Infectious Diseases Research Institute in Seattle. And uh, there are obviously a lot of other uh, donors who've uh, assisted us and uh, a lot of other uh, clinicians and scientists involved, but these are the two main organizations. And leprosy is a complicated disease. Uh, I'm uh, just showing here a graph of how the immunity to leprosy is high right up, up on the left. Most people never get leprosy because they have a high enough immunity uh, never to, to get the disease. And that immunity decreases towards the bottom right. And it's a cell-mediated immunity. And uh, as the immunity declines, people who get leprosy they have a higher and higher disease uh, bacillary burden. And the disease is very different across that spectrum, which is what makes leprosy uh, a very fascinating disease. And this is just a, a picture of someone who has very multi-bacillary disease. He has uh, 10, to the, 10 to the 11 bacilli in him. And uh, he came to a clinic and said he had a history of four years of having these nodules and probably most people shorten the time of their history so it might have been longer and we also think that people are infectious long before they even have any symptoms. So he has probably been uh, infectious for at least 10 years and we think that is a big pool of people who are continuing the spread of leprosy and certainly diagnostic tests which were mentioned earlier, are a very big focus in leprosy and a lot of effort has been spent to diagnose people earlier. But uh, it's been very difficult to, to get tests that are both sensitive and specific enough to, to work. <coughs> uh, so this is the picture of leprosy throughout the world and I really want to look at the bottom line, this, this green line which is the rest of the world excluding India. And over this, this is 20, uh, no, 30 years uh, of um, data. And over that period, there has been various attempts at elimination. But if you look at that bottom green line, it doesn't really seem to have made much difference to the number of new cases that are occurring worldwide. And even the more recent figures are probably, there's a lot of underreporting. If you go to the data, many countries in Africa have stopped reporting since the elimination campaigns have been uh, concluded. Uh, and if you look at this uh, study which we did in the Philippines over a period of 10 years, uh, of all the children under 15, this is the uh, spread of their ages, and people are still getting leprosy at the age of five and under. And that means that leprosy transmission is still very active uh, and many countries, over a hundred countries, have this picture of still being, there's still children getting leprosy. Uh, so one of the issues is that we don't know an awful lot about transmission. Uh, so here is what we do know. Uh, household contacts have an increased risk and the majority of cases a part of a larger pool of contacts. And in low endemic areas, you tend to get uh, more cases amongst contacts. There is an armadillo reservoir in the southern United States, which has just been reported, uh, but that seems to be an unusual situation. And also there are case reports of uh, transmission through contact, skin to skin, but that also doesn't seem to be the typical route of infection. What we don't know, uh, because M. lepri can't be grown in vitro, we uh, don't really know how widespread it is and how persistent it is in the environment. So in a household where people are getting leprosy, we have no idea really <coughs> the dynamics of uh, the bacillus 
within that environment. And the uh, porcibacillary cases, those are the ones with uh, some immunity and very few bacilli. We don't know if they, uh, <coughs> excuse me, never transmit leprosy or whether they go through an early phase of having a, a large bacillary load and then they uh, possibly transmit the disease and then have less bacilli. But it may just be only the multibacillary uh, ones who transmit the disease. Uh, no other environmental reservoir has been conclusively uh, demonstrated. Primates don't easily get leprosy. And even with the armadillos, we don't know exactly how it's transmitted. So we know it's the same strain in humans and armadillos in the southern United States. But how they interact, we don't know. And as I mentioned right at the beginning, we don't know when these MB cases become infectious as they incubate leprosy. It's a very slow process to build up a, a large bacillary load, so we presume they become infectious uh, relative in the middle somewhere. Uh, so what we're wanting to do is move on from a case finding and chemotherapy uh, strategy to a strategy of uh, post-exposure chemoprophylaxis uh, uh, through contact examination. Uh, so if you examine contacts, you, ex you find some new cases early, and chemoprophylaxis has already been uh, trialed. There's uh, been a very good trial in Bangladesh which shows that uh, there's a 57% protection from a single dose of rifampicin over a short period, over two years. Uh, and there's other supportive evidence uh, from in Indonesia uh, that a single dose of rifampicin is a good protective measure uh, in contacts. But it's not perfect, and uh, we have various research challenges. Uh, so we want to do operational research to implement, uh, have to implement the contact examinations, uh, and there are a lot of questions around that, uh, integrating contact examination into routine health services, way of doing that, how many contacts should be examined and given the chemoprophylaxis, what about informed consent and ethical issues, and is there a problem when stigma is high. So these are operational issues that we're starting to look at. And there is also the possibility that chemoprophylaxis could be enhanced. Uh, so for example, a higher dose of rifampicin or other drugs such as rifapentine or drug combinations. Uh, and so it's possible that you could do diagnostic tests and see who would benefit more from different regimens of chemoprophylaxis, but that's quite complex. And all of these advances or changes to a chemoprophylactic regimen would require clinical trials, so that's quite a, a big investment. But uh, one of the things that we are uh, now looking forward to is enhancing post-exposure prophylaxis through immunoprophylaxis. And in the past, various vaccines have been shown to have some protective effect in contacts of leprosy cases. So BCG was used, and then various other mycobacterial species, MW, MVACI, the, these have been used. But actually, uh, they're all fairly similar to BCG. And if there is a protective effect, uh, it seems to last for at least eight years. And the effect is quite variable between different countries. And it seems that probably when people have had BCG vaccine at birth, uh, BCG is not a very good booster. So we have, going back to this partnership between uh, American Leprosy Missions and IDRI, uh, we developed a, a new vaccine over about the last 12 years, and it's now ready for phase one trials. Uh, so the, the goal is that it would be an adjunct to chemoprophylaxis 
uh, to both boost the previous prote uh, protective effect of BCG, which has been given at birth in most people nowadays, and prolong the protective effect of chemoprophylaxis in contacts of leprosy cases. Uh, so this is the vaccine. There's no patent, so anybody can go and manufacture it who'd like. Uh, but it's uh, four antigens from uh, the leprosy genome, and these uh, boxes just show the protective effect in the mouse foot pad, which is not a particularly good model, but it is at least suggestive of some, that some protective effect will be gained. And the adjuvant is a, an adjuvant also developed and owned by IDRI, which is, uh, simulates cell-mediated immunity rather than not a, an antibody response. And just a final slide which shows that uh, they did a study in armadillos in the southern United States where on the left the control group uh, after six, seven, nine months had a lot of nerve damage. Our, the armadillo model is the only animal model in which uh, there is more or less a, si a similar disease to, to that in humans and they actually get nerve damage. And on the right, the three bars show the nerve damage in the, in the animals that were immunized with the, the lepvax. And so they had much less nerve damage. So that, again, our animal models are not great, but they give some hope that we will get a, a good response to this vaccine. Uh, so I just thank the colleagues in uh, Cebu, uh, Seattle, Baton Rouge, where the American National Hansen's Disease Program is, and then also in, in Tokyo, where they did some of the mouse footpath studies. Thank you.